ladies and gentlemen, Hugh Bonneville. In uh, conferring this award, I, I thought I'd like to get something straight at the outset, because I have discovered that Hugh Bonneville, perhaps obviously, is somewhat younger than me. This is not a Lifetime Achievement Award. He's about halfway through. <laughs> Hugh's career as a stage actor started in 1986. That seems very recently to me, but to many people in this building it will seem a long time ago. He continues to be a distinguished stage actor, and if you go to California next year, you can see him as Uncle Vanya. A few years later, his television career began, and a few years after that, his film career began. And around the beginning of this century, the awards and nominations threatened to topple his mantelpiece. Actually, looking back over the achievements on stage that Hugh has notched up, it's amazing to anybody the sheer depth and breadth of what he does. He can play Moliere, Lorca, Shaw, David Edgar, Ratkin, Aitbourne, John Osborne, Somerset Maugham. He can do anything from Shakespeare to Panto. Mm -hmm. Now, Hugh explained to me that he is not a leading man. He is a character actor. And in case I didn't know what that was, he meant the one who doesn't get the girl. <laughs> However, I was fortunate enough to see him on many occasions on the stage, but many, many more people have seen him on screen. And to many people in the nave of this cathedral, he will be particularly familiar because of his role in, <laughs> as Robert Earl of Grantham in Downton Abbey over a number of seasons, perhaps muddled a little in our minds with Mr. Brown from Paddington. <laughs> now, there is something that cuts in when somebody becomes a very, very well-known performer, however deservedly. And for the purposes of this citation, we're going to call it the Bonneville Effect. If you can picture me with a glass of wine in my hand, wondering what to do of an evening, and scrolling through Netflix or Amazon Prime, I will call out, there was something I saw, it had Hugh Bonneville in it. And the answer might be, what was it called? I don't know. What was it about? I don't know. It had Hugh Bonneville in it. Well, search Hugh Bonneville. Actually, this Bonneville effect came to a head not many hundreds of yards from where we're sitting now just up the road in the CFT. A few years ago, Hugh played in Ibsen's modernist classic, Enemy of the People. I was lucky enough to see it. It caused a bit of a stir. The stir was positive. Everybody thought it was jolly good, and I did too. But uh, lots of newspapers reviewed it, including, unexpectedly, The Sun. This is The Sun's review, or the beginning of it. This is when a performer becomes bigger than the thing they're performing. Abbey, to expose the truth. Downton star Hugh Bonneville plays hero in new play about press freedom. It was written in 1882. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's new to sun readers, perhaps. However, the Telegraph jumped in. Bonneville, champion of free speech. The naughty Guardian suggested the next headline might be Shakespeare backs Brexit. <laughs> the truth is, it's very exciting when you know what you're going to get and you're always surprised by it when it comes. Well, I'm going to quote from Hugh briefly now. Uh, he has said, and I think this is rather attractive, at 19, you know everything. By the time you're 40, you haven't got a clue. Now, I'm trying to connect this to the people who are graduating today because, quite frankly, when you're told about somebody who's a very high achiever, it's pretty scary when you've just graduated. I don't think many of our graduands are still teenagers. In fact, you lot probably don't get carded anymore. But 
you are slowly moving towards that age of uncertainty. So I've been chatting to Hugh, and I've tried to get uh, some, some tips for you. First of all, about should you know what you're going to do in life? Uh, and secondly, about will it work if you want to do it? When Hugh was very young, he was absolutely clear about what he wanted to do. And this certainty lasted right up into the age he went to university. Hugh was going to be a lawyer. That was a good idea. Unfortunately, as he told me, he met what he called a fantastically inspiring teacher. Don't do that. <laughs> Keep away from fantastically inspiring teachers. They will lead you astray. So although Hugh was already thinking to himself, I am going to be a lawyer, this is my plan, in his words he said, I'll go and do something for three years that I really love. So he went to university and studied theology. Actually, fortunately, when you go to university, as everyone here knows, you don't just come into contact with teachers, you come into contact with other students. And luckily, the other students must have influenced him to put aside such uh, silly, light-hearted things as theology and do something much more worthwhile and sensible. By the time he graduated, he knew he really wanted to be an actor. So how does it work? You has done an amazing amount of acting. I mean, really, he's done a lot. When I spoke to him, he was fitting in the conversation between lots of work schedule. So it's not surprising to me, as a non-actor, that he's really good at it. Everybody agrees Hugh Bonneville is a really good actor, but he's done lots of acting. But if you look at his career, it's obvious that very early on, most people thought he was really good at it. So that's something that most of the graduates in this room would like to know, how do you do that? And he gave me a tip for you, and I've inferred a second tip, which he didn't tell me. The first is that he said, well, one advantage he had as a young actor was that he was very good at sight reading. And this is for a fairly seemingly random reading. Uh, when he was at school, um, he was forced to memorize poetry very regularly and declaim it in front of the class. Well, that could be annoying, but it means you learn how to learn things. And sight reading isn't just reading words or musical notes. It's guessing where a sentence is going, imagining what its emotion is, what the voice should be. So he was a good sight reader. So that's a tip for everybody who wants to go out there and be a performer. I think it stretches from acting to dance to music. Be a good sight reader. The second tip he didn't give me, but I've picked it up because there is yet more to Hugh Bonneville. He's very loyal to this part of the world. He's a deputy lieutenant of West Sussex, and since 2017, he's been a patron of the South Downs National Park Trust. But he's also very loyal to another part of the world, and that's people who are outside wanting to get in. He works with Seen and Heard, which is an organization that partners in the inner city with children and theater professionals. He works with the primary Shakespeare company engaging primary school children with Shakespeare. National Youth Arts Trust, trying to get access to performing arts for non-privileged backgrounds people. National Youth Theater, Go Live Theater Project. He said to me, it's important to help the next person up the ladder. Well, that's nice, but it tells me something else about you. Yes, you need to be a good sight reader. You need to be somebody other people want to work with. And what I've just told you about him makes you think it would be nice working with you. He said, if you see a door ajar, know how to open it without knocking it down. I think that's quite elegant too. Anyway, I am going to just head now to the real truth of the reason I'm rather excited to be talking about Hugh Bonneville when he can't say anything. He's got a right of reply in a moment, so this is rather special actually for me, because Hugh has lived my dreams. He has been in Doctor Who, he has been in James Bond. 
He has been in EastEnders. He has worked with Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> he has worked with the Muppets. He has worked extensively with Paddington Bear. <laughs> and breathe it softly, but he's been on Top Gear. <laughs> now recently, Hugh was added to a very distinguished pantheon of actors who, by a curious twist of fate, include the person he was understudying in his first ever professional gig, Ray Fiennes. He actually has been voted by popular internet acclaim the thinking woman's crumpet. Chair of Governors, I present to you Hugh Bonneville for the award of a Doctor of Theatre Honoris Cauda of the University of Chichester. Well, thank you so much, uh, Chair, Vice-Chancellor, and all the uh, members of the, of the uh, teaching staff up here, and to all of you, thank you. This is a tremendous honour. I've lived and flourished in this county on and off for 40 years. Uh, I've moved away more recently, but it's wonderful to be back in this wonderful cathedral and to be amongst fellow practitioners. Congratulations to all graduates. I, uh, sorry, I should say graduates. Um, when I started out, I didn't have any connection at all in the industry that I had chosen. Uh, my parents were in the medical profession. They were very supportive of my having a go. I'd given myself three years to get an equity card, and then I would go and get the proper job of being a lawyer. Um, in those days, the equity card was absolutely essential. Now, I'm often asked for advice about starting out, and this is just an example from my own life to do with taking advice. Uh, we knew one person, I tell a lie, we knew one person uh, who was loosely associated with the profession. She was an agent's assistant. Now, this is back in the mid-1980s, and as I say, I knew nothing about the wider profession. Uh, and in those days, you had to get the equity card in order to work. Uh, I had been offered an equity card at the Open Air Theatre in Regent's Park, and I'd also been offered an equity card in a theatre in education company driving around the countryside doing cut-down productions of Shakespeare in schools. And when I went to see our friend, Anne, I asked for her advice because she had worked in the business on and off for 20 years. She said, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind what you should do. You should join the Theatre in Education Company because you will get to play Shakespearean roles that you won't get the chance to play for several years yet. You will work in a tight-knit little company. You will interact with children uh, who are the harshest critics and the greatest educators. Um, I think standing on stage holding a spear at Regent's Park would not, to be your would, not to be, uh, would not be to your advantage. So I listened to her and I weighed it up and I did exactly the opposite. <laughs> the point being, listen to advice, but follow your own instinct. My instinct was that I should be on a stage understudying, learning from fine actors like Ray Fiennes, or Fiennes, um, uh, and that I did. So I never regret that decision. The other bit of advice I would give you is to watch Tootsie, a film starring Dustin Hoffman. It may not be very palatable these days to some, but I still think it's a masterpiece in its own way, because it's about the acting profession and the struggles that, they've, that every actor faces. At the beginning of the movie, Dustin Hoffman is playing, is, a, is an actor, an off-Broadway actor, and you see him go to audition after audition, and the word is always no, no, no. And uh, ultimately, he's talking to someone out there in the stalls with the light shining on him when he's done yet another failed audition. He says, look, I can be taller, and they say, we want someone shorter. I can be shorter, etc., etc. And eventually, they say, we just don't want you. No. And the word no comes to you very, very frequently. It still comes to me now. I still audition, and sometimes I don't get the job. Um, and it doesn't get that much easier, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I've been doing this for 30-something years now. But if you need to act, if you need to perform, if you need to be a musician, you will. It's something within you. 
It is a passion, it's a drive, it's a calling. I always say to young students, if you feel you've got a choice of perhaps going into uh, administration, or if you also think you might quite like the idea of working uh, in the financial markets, or possibly being an actor, do the other two, because acting is a need. And, um, and finally, to liberate you from that pressure of hearing the word no too often, I, I remember going up for, I've never been very good at being an orange, by which, mean, by, by which I mean going into a commercial audition and being treated as a, you know, an inanimate object that has to bring life to this commercial. Um, I've never been very good at that, but I did at one point some years ago go up for a toilet uh, roll commercial. Um, I think it was called, I think it's called Charmin. It's about bears that do things in the woods. And uh, that's their sort of scenario. And I remember turning up for this audition, uh, I think it was a, you know, a, a, a two o'clock audition, and there was four people, all looking rather large like me, um, waiting. And it turned out that the advertising team had gone off for a long boozy lunch and weren't back yet. And these were the sort of 1.15 and 1.30 slots. And, um, uh, I asked the girl at the desk, you know, she said, fill in this form, and I sat there and looking at my compadres and wondering what was going to happen. Then eventually the door burst open and three or four slightly tiddly uh, advertising executives rolled in and walked into the audition room. Everyone's um, dignity gradually sinking through the floor. And, um, the, you know, one of them got up and uh, headed into the room, and I really thought, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm not destined to be a bear in the woods, I'm, I'm sure of it. Um, but I better, I better sit it out. And um, <clears throat> a couple of seconds later, I heard from within the audition room my colleague um, making the most extraordinary noises. And I realized what we were all being asked to do in order to advertise the toilet paper about the bear who does things in the woods. And then suddenly, it was as if the clouds had opened. And there above me was some spirit from above who was looking down at me and he said, Hugh, you don't have to do this. And it was a huge weight suddenly off my shoulder. And I handed this clipboard back to the girl at the desk. And she said, where are you going? And I said, I've suddenly remembered I've got to watch television. <laughs> <clears throat> and that word no actually has helped me along the way. Don't do things because you're just so desperate that you think you ought to. Have the dignity, have the courage of your convictions. You have trained for these years. You have shown your peers your teachers, your families, what you can do, the stuff you're made of. So while you will hear no a lot, also be prepared, if you possibly can, to say no. I'm better than this. I need to follow my own path. And with that, I wish you all congratulations.